The events in the following episode took place on March 22nd and 23rd, 2018. Why are we drawn to people who are bad for us? The answer, essentially, in a nutshell, is why are we drawn to potential partners who would be unavailable? Um, And that's because, generally, most people are drawn to people who remind us of one of our parents. And so love addicts who didn't receive love from the opposite sex parent, typically, um, subconsciously, they will try to get that void filled from their adult partners. I'm speaking with Marnie Breaker, a licensed marriage and family therapist and the founder of the Center for Relational Healing. We're discussing an addiction that may play a part in a day's disappearance. In addiction to the most intoxicating drug of all, love. Oftentimes people are putting up with really awful behaviors, abuse, manipulation. Um, They're clinging to relationships and begging essentially to stay in a toxic relationship when really what would be the most healthy for that person would be to leave. And so often, you know, this kind of abuse that you're talking about and creates that high that, um, or that fix that a love addict is constantly needing. Like it's not love if it's not dramatic. Correct. And you know, the truth is love addiction is not, it's not love. It's as real as an as drug addiction and alcohol or gambling. It affects the brain the same way. Love addiction truly takes people to a, a horrible, horrible place. Can love addiction lead someone to suicide or to kill someone else? Yes, I would say yes. They literally rely on others to fulfill them and to make them feel happy and whole. So when that that love object is taken away from them, they fall apart. They can't handle it. Chapter 10, Lake of the Woods. Apparently, they got cell phone pings that show that Chris stopped at that location for like 40 minutes. After Chris picked up Adea on the day she disappeared, police believe that he stopped 75 miles north of Los Angeles at a remote location called Lake of the Woods. As I research online... I find that the area is part of the U.S. National Forest and is surrounded by mountains. It's not the type of place you find accidentally. It's not a known tourist destination. And let's face it, it's a very suspicious detour, considering the circumstances. So I think that that they feel like that was a location where there was a possible body disposal. Um, I think jives with what uh, Chris Merez is saying. He was, you know, he, he says, and I'm sure he said the same thing to LAPD, that, um, you know, Chris arrived alone. So, you know, I, I, I think that's what's going on right now. Oh my God, have you told Nora yet? No, I just got off the phone with LAPD just now. This is the first time there's been any lead on a possible location for Adea. Up to this point, we've all been operating on the hope of finding Adea alive. And while that's still the desired outcome, we're now faced with the reality that the LAPD is actually looking for a body. But didn't Chris return to his dad's house like uh, two weeks ago or something like that? Yeah, that's what he said. Um, So I think, yeah, we should probably, you know, next time I talk to LAPD, I will mention that to them and see if... uh, they can corroborate that with the pings or if they have him stopping at that same location maybe two weeks later. Yeah, maybe he went back and like was worried he left something there or, or moved her or did something. I mean, people, like, do people return to the scene of the crime? I mean, they do. I mean, uh, if nothing more than to just put eyes on it, I think, you know, maybe not to move anything or do anything, but just to, just to see it, just to see that it's still undisturbed. I think uh, for somebody like him, that might have been Good peace of mind, I guess. Where do we think he is now? I guess, I guess it's L.A., Northern California, Colorado. Yeah, those are the three areas of interest. I mean, he's got to be somewhere around there. 
I mean, the one thing we know is if he's back in LA, you know, he's not his in, in Mary's apartment. Uh, we've had units there pretty consistently. And even watching yeah. his friend's place too, right? Correct. Based on Chris's movements, he would have passed by Lake of the Woods, where the police are now searching, at least three times. Jaden calls the police and asks them if they can check Chris's pings from that second trip to the area. He then calls me back a few hours later. Hey man, so, uh, I mean, uh, you're not going to believe this. I talked to the LAPD. They're telling me that uh, pings do indicate, as we suspected, that he went back to that same location. God, I mean, you know, I, I thought that they were, you know, I was led to believe that surveillance was on him. Obviously not. Uh, you know, we're talking about two weeks later, you know, he, if he actually went back to the same location, uh, that could have been him right there. If these cell phone pings tell the full story, it seems likely that Chris drove 16 miles off the 5 freeway. And not just once, but twice. The first time, staying for approximately 40 minutes, which is enough time to dispose of a body. The frustrating part is that not only are the police just now piecing this together, but it appears that they have lost track of Chris in the process. Early the next morning, Jaden calls with even more frustrating news. Nora was so upset yesterday, like when I called her, Uh because she's like, I'm so upset that the police called to ask what the password for the laptop is. And she was just like, I'm so upset. I can't believe that they haven't looked at the computer yet. They're so incompetent. We gave them the password. It's just fucking ridiculous. The reason Jaden is so bent out of shape is because the laptop is a key piece of evidence. Someone was on that computer in a day's apartment, possibly deleting data after she disappeared. Jaden goes on to tell me that he also just received a missed call on his phone, surprisingly, from Chris's attorney. So, so she didn't leave a message, but I, I was going to call her back. I just want to make sure we were on the same page. We yeah. assume that Chris's attorney is telling Jaden to back off because he's been reaching out to everyone in Chris's inner circle trying to find him. Jaden's already reached out to Chris's fiance, Mary, who told Jaden not to contact her and who hasn't spoken to anyone. Chris's mom completely blew Jaden off when he flew all the way to Colorado to track down Chris. There seemed to be roadblocks at every turn when trying to find Chris, which makes this call from his attorney that much more interesting. As I wait for Jaden to call back with an update, I start tackling another mystery. How can we start to get more information on Chris? Alex, who works with me, stops by to help me figure this out. Oh, you know what? Is, is this, uh, does he have a cut on his face? Who? Chris, in the, have you seen Chris Spots' profile? Yeah, it's like of his acting thing. No, no, go to his Facebook profile. Looks like he has a cut on his face. Yeah, that, he's got like on an old wartime hat. Oh, oh, it's an acting thing. Part of his acting. Okay. Let's see if Jaden responded. He's probably on the phone with the lawyer, man. That's, that's, that could only be good. Do me a favor, will you capture? I downloaded all his videos off YouTube. Yeah, oh good, thanks. Hey Jim, I'm gonna call you from the landline. Yeah, you need to record this. Okay, shit, okay. Get ready, it's gonna go out to go down. Chapter 11. Unconfirmed. Okay, what happened? So, um, she called and... The she that Jaden is referring to is Chris's attorney. Now, this is unconfirmed. Okay. So, this is unconfirmed. But she called me and she wanted me to know. She said, first of all, I want you to know that what I told you is everything I know... That is everything that Chris told me, and that is what I believe to be accurate. I don't know anymore, I didn't know anymore, but Chris was stopped, a traffic stop, 
today by law enforcement and killed himself. <gasps> Holy shit. So, this is unconfirmed. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's look into this right now. Well, there's nothing I can, I, I've, I've put out every, every message I can. I don't even know. She said that she, she doesn't know where it was. He was on his way back from Colorado. She thinks it was in San Bernardino, but she doesn't know. Now that doesn't really make a super, super amount of sense that it's San Bernardino, but one of my, one of my buddies at the sheriff's department reminded me that San Bernardino County Sheriff covers all the way out to Las Vegas. So if they were, if he was coming down to 15, back the Reno route than it is possible but that's where he was at what holy shit man holy shit what do we do about um man okay what do we do about uh the mom what do we do about the uh, Nora the mom do we wait till we confirm this I wouldn't want to tell her that right now holy shit listen I, the only reason she called me to tell me that is to cover her ass cover ass in what way all she told me was listen i want you to know that all that i knew was what he told me because she knows that he's now obviously guilty right and his story was a lie and she was out there sell, selling a lie i mean she did yeah that, her her point in calling me like literally the first thing she said was i want you to know that everything that he said to me or everything that i told you was everything that he told me And she repeated that like twice. So that was definitely her intention was to, you know, was that. Okay, so I think I think you I think well, what's what's our next phone call then? Do you want to research this? Do you want to call the your the police? Do you want to text the police while we stay on the phone? I mean, I've. I mean, I've contacted, I mean, I've already, con like, it'll, it'll, depending on when it happens, it will come through the Justice Department Information Center. It, 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 it everything like that. Right. So listen, okay, but listen, as investigators, this is the time now to find out what happened, including calling, like, I think, yeah, I think, I think, I think, uh, I can, I can just freaking call Mary. I mean, the press are going to be calling anyway. I can just call Mary. I won't tell her. I'll just say, hey, I'm calling. I mean, uh, but you, we're, okay, but I mean, this, I'm telling you, you this is unconfirmed. This is from an attorney. This is from his attorney. This is unconfirmed. I have no other sources on this information. She could have gotten it as a rumor for all I know. I have no idea. And she didn't even know where the traffic stop was? No. She said that, it, she, said that she thinks it was somewhere in San Bernardino. I mean, I, I'm fine. I just, you, you know, you're... Oh, here, uh, uh hold on, hold on, we're Googling this now. Uh, yeah, I think we, I think we might've found it. Uh, hold on, uh, man possibly connected to LA County homicide, killed himself in Corona and end of pursuit. A Caucasian when? male, uh, Caucasian male adult. This was this morning at like, well, let's see. Sick. Uh, last night, the pursuit began at 8.45 PM Thursday. Pursuing a stolen, uh, deputies were pursuing a stolen Toyota to Tacoma pickup south on the 15 freeway. That's fucking him. The truck may have been connected to a homicide in Los Angeles County officials later. Learned. That's him. Okay. That's him. Chapter 12 Gone Girl. The job right now is to find out what happened to Adea. It's still the job, right? And this fucking right. coward doesn't want to face the consequences for what he did. Like now it's time to like, just shake the fucking trees. I don't care. Let's call the dad. He's guilty now. Let's ask the dad where the guy fucking hiked while this is going on. And you call and say, listen, I'm so sorry this tragedy happened to your son. Uh, I'm angry this happened because it really tells us the rest of the story. Right now, let's put this, you know, let's have something positive come out of this for Adea's family. I don't care. Let's call him. You know, he knows, okay, right. he knows, right? What do you think? And then we should then, or- Look, okay, I don't care, yeah. Yeah, and, okay. And should I call Nora? Should I go to Nora? 
I think let's call the dad. I think let's. I think dad marry Nora. What do you think? Or should we call it Nora first? I mean, we should call dad. Or no way, uh, Mary talks to us. No way, Mary talks to us. Let's call the dad, then let's call Nora. Okay, and you want me to call you back? Later? I have a very short window to get in touch with as many of Chris's friends and family as possible, hoping that just maybe Chris told the truth to someone. Once the police reveal to the media that the suicide victim in the truck is Chris Spots, and he's then associated with missing person at Dea Shabani, the media is going to explode all over this, and they'll be calling every person who's ever been associated with Chris. It's important to keep in mind that no one in Chris's inner circle, outside of his father, has cooperated with the police. So the first call I make is to his father, Chris Morez. He's obviously in a lot of pain right now, but maybe he can bring some peace to this other family that's also suffering. This is Chris from you like to leave a message, do so, and I'll get back to you, and have a blessed day. Our first two calls are not successful. Chris's dad doesn't answer, nor does a day's mom, Nora. She didn't answer. Oh, he says, don't wait. Kaiser just texted me. Motherfucker. Well, you know, I mean, fuck. He says, don't mention it to Nora. Who said that? Don't mention it. I'm meeting Nora and need to explain a few things. Who said that? Kaiser. Who's Kaiser? The The detective. While Jaden works out his differences with the police, the next person I call in this short window of time is Chris's best friend, Brian, whose apartment I was staking out while Chris was supposedly staying there. To protect his identity, I've distorted his voice here. Okay, cool. I'm gonna I'll call on this phone, and then uh, then I'll keep you on the phone. Right. And then meantime, think of this. Oh, you're gonna keep. Wait, you're gonna. Yeah, keep, I'll keep you on the phone. Do you want to hear it? You probably want to hear oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. mute it now. I'll mute up. All right, here we go. Hello. Oh, hey. Yes. Yeah, this is Neil Strauss. I'm doing doing a story on a uh, you know a day uh, uh, Shabani, and uh, you know I was looking into you know Chris, your friend who you grew up with. <laughs> Yep. And uh, and I'm not sure if you heard any news from uh, the last 24 hours at all. Yeah, I've, I've um, yeah, I've heard the news. Yeah. Okay. And I'm and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Then, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. And uh, and if you have a couple moments, I think. Um. And and how much did you know about everything that had happened beforehand? I mean, I know you were close and. He continues giving short, vague answers, and it's clear he doesn't want to talk or cooperate. Yeah, I mean, you go ahead and tell me what's going on. Uh, cool. So, so I'll tell. I'll tell you what I kind of know, and uh, um, and and maybe you can share 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 the rest with me. And obviously, I know you're friends with Chris. I know you know about a day and Mary. I know you guys are uh, each other's closest friends, correct? So I don't need to fill you in on that, correct? Well, I know, man. I don't know what you're talking about. Can do you, not, oh, do you not know what I'm talking about? Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I assume I might assume you know more than you know. Do you know what I'm talking about at all? Look, man. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks for your time. He hangs up on me, dude. I've never done that before. I've never like called somebody who's you just lost somebody who yeah. been accused of murder. Yeah, I don't think anybody has. <laughs> I realize immediately afterward that I made a crucial mistake with Brian. I was so focused on finding Adea that I didn't stop to think about what Brian was really going through, having lost a best friend so suddenly. And I've made a lot of assumptions. I've been assuming that Brian knows something and may be involved in some way. I've been assuming that Mary knows something and may be involved. I've been assuming even that Chris is guilty because his behavior is so suspicious. It's probably an understatement to even describe his behavior as suspicious. It's more than that. But there's no actual proof that Chris is responsible. And if there was proof, Chris wouldn't, presumably, 
have been permitted to run around free for a month without getting arrested or even taken in for questioning. So I try to set aside my presumptions and judgments and realize that Chris's friends and his family are suffering as well. And Mary, even if she was involved, even if she knows where Dea is, even if it was her that was in Adea's apartment that night, is still probably experiencing the worst day of her life. Was the, mis- was the Tacoma he was driving in Mary's car? Yes. So she must have reported stolen. Yes. That's what I told you. I said, if she doesn't, re- if she doesn't, report, if she doesn't report it stolen, then she was involved. I mean, because otherwise she's, otherwise she's an idiot. She's aiding and abetting a homicide suspect. Should I reach out to Mary cold or just fucking let it be? She probably won't talk to me. I mean, just, the president going to reach out anyway. I mean, I might as well reach out to her now. What do you think? Yeah, just go ahead. Uh, what's, what's her, uh, will you text me her number? Can I just give you, can I just give you her number? Yeah, just give me your number. All right. Um, 919. Okay. Okay. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Jaden. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Hello. Oh, hey, Mary. This is this is Neil Strauss. I'm sorry to bother you at this time, um, but I'm doing a piece on on Chris and everything that's happened. And again, I'm so sorry to bother you right now. It's going to say everything that, that happened. If it's a good piece and there's good stuff, please tell me good stuff. He, he was amazing. He really was a beautiful man. And a beautiful soul. Everybody who came in contact with him loved him. Everyone. He was... He, had, he was dedicated and driven and full of love. And unfortunately, he seemed to be a victim of a witch hunt. What, what, what were they saying that, that wasn't true, and what's the, the, the truth? And I'm so sorry. <laughs> Honestly, they, they just, none of what they were saying was just find this missing person. It was just to catch Chris. Something on him. He's not that kind of man. It sounds like they had his license plate on alert in both Colorado and California. You know, I'm so glad I'm talking to you because that I thought that was, I thought that was your car. So I thought maybe you had reported it uh, missing. They had no, to be out for it. No. Wow. His name is on the truck. This wasn't stolen. Both of our names are on it. They're lying. And they also told me that it was a routine traffic stop. But the, you don't have your guns drawn with routine traffic stop. No, we've been getting harassed by police officers, private investigators, and her this girl's family for, for a month at least now. They would, they would tell me that Chris is not in any trouble. He's not a suspect. He's not. They just want to talk to him. But people you just want to talk to, you don't serve search warrants for. You don't put their license and their car on, on alert for her to in two different states. <sighs> And then, and then, but why, why did he have a gun? Because he was scared of, uh, like, her, he was scared, I guess, of her family? Yes, she, her father, I guess, has connections to the Macedonian Mafia. <laughs> and they, it sounds like they completely disregarded that. Like, there's a reason he's, he's, he's he wasn't in California. And we confirmed it through separate resources that her father has ties to the Macedonian mafia. I just don't understand why he didn't just let himself be pulled over. What do you think happened? <laughs> because he 
he was one. He was afraid of the police officers. You know, there's a, this happens all the time. Women who don't get what they want just accuse and accuse or do something like that. And she told him that she was going to do this to him. What did, what did she say? <laughs> she told him that she was, I quote, to gone girl herself. <laughs> to, to, to what herself? Gone girl, like oh. the movie. <laughs> she's gone after him in the last time he tried to break up with her. She went after him with a knife, <laughs> running up and down her hallway. <laughs> yeah, this, this was like about a week before she disappeared, right? I heard that she, yeah, that she had cuts on her hand from a knife. Yes. And did he have cuts That's as true. well? He, he, did he have he had cuts as well? Yes, he did. He had cuts on his hand, like he was. She told him that she was going to bring her Macedonian friends and come to our apartment. <laughs> so we left our apartment. And the LA Police Department is corrupt. He was afraid that they, there would be connections there and he would just be a sitting duck. <laughs> so you never try to go to the police for protection or, any, or even just get a bodyguard or something? No, because they, they just they kept coming after him. <laughs> I know for a fact that what you're saying is correct, that they did try to break up and that something happened with a knife. She was actually at our apartment complex that the Monday that incident happened. <laughs> she threatened him to commit suicide in front of our building. <laughs> and what did she, did you see her in front of the building? I didn't, but there is footage. I had the apartment, our apartment manager pulled that footage and she is on there. And what what, ha what happened? Like they're making her out to be such a saint. And she, she's not. The police just wanted him. They wanted to be this on him. So when she was at your apartment, was that the morning that she disappeared? She came to your apartment first? No, this was um, the, the Sunday before and the Monday before. <laughs> yeah, and I think she was trying to tell you or something, but you had already, you already knew you already knew by Sunday. Yes, so she had no more power, so she told him she was going to do this and ruin his life, and she did. Would it be helpful to you at all to share what he had shared, what he had told them about the last time he saw her, or is that not? Is that something you'd rather yes, not know? Yes, please. Um, he had said that um, through his lawyer had said that he was going to Magic Mountain. They'd gotten in a fight, and she'd gotten out of the car. I think in Santa Clarita, is, is I believe what he had told them. Yeah, I think mean, that's about right. I also, I also know that she wasn't hitting him; like she was hitting him to pull over and trying to get him to crash. Wow. Here's the here's the one thing I'm confused by. Maybe you can clarify on is that they they were they had signed a lease to move in together. It was just the application because she kept threatening him. <laughs> she said it was weeks and weeks of her threatening him. She filled the application. She was emailed it to him a few times. She texted it to him. <laughs> he had no intention of moving in. And he just did it because she kept threatening and it was just the application. <laughs> he was making plans with me. <laughs> was making plans with you? <laughs> we were... <laughs> we weren't going to leave LA for a while. <laughs> and, uh, um, had you, when, had you guys, were you guys, and again, I'm sorry, this is probably the hardest question I'm gonna ask, but were you guys planning to get, to get married like this year or, or soon? We, we didn't have any plans, you know? What for us, in our hearts, we were married. <laughs> We've been living together for the majority of our relationship. So you guys were just staying at hotels and friends' houses? Is that where you guys were, were, were just staying every night somewhere different? Or? For probably a week or so, and then we left California for a while, for a few weeks. And, and uh, oh, and, oh yeah, and where, where was he driving back from? Where had he- He was coming yesterday? back home to me. From, from uh, Colorado? <laughs> 
God, oh my God, I'm so sorry. This is part of the, the other hard question asked when he told you what was going on. I guess you maybe already knew or were you upset with him when he told you what was going on or upset with... I, I had an idea. I, I think I knew. I just didn't, didn't want to believe it, I guess. I don't know. And the th other thing that... which I, I don't know if she was pregnant or saying she was pregnant. She, she was not. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't ring true that this is what really, what, re, what really happened. And, and then yeah. I'll, 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 let, I'll, let, I'll let you go. Is there anything else that either I should know about Chris? Um, where, where did you get all this information from? Oh, I'm, just, I'm a writer and reporter and I just basically talk to everybody and try to find out the truth. And, he was really a good man. I'm going to text you, this is my uh, landline, but I'm going to text you for my cell number. So if you have it or you have any questions... Um, um, you can feel free to ask me along the way, okay? Thank you. Oh, and th thank you again for the time. Okay, thank you, Mary. Okay, bye-bye. <sighs> Holy shit. I kind of have the chills. Poor girl. Hey, man, I just talked to Mary for uh, how long, Alex? 38 minutes. For 38 minutes. Oh, God, God. I just, real, I just realized that you just, you just forget when you're doing this that somebody's friends really believe in them. And oh, my God. Yeah, she was really crying the whole time, but she really, like, opened up about, every, about everything. Got really, like, choked up talking to her because this poor, poor Mary, like, this poor girl. Like, so about five weeks ago, Chris told her he was cheating with this other person. She really thinks that she's been stalking him. She's been harassing him. He would try to get out of scenes and she'd talk to the teachers and make him stay in the scenes. Then, um... What's most surprising about this is that Mary seems to know a lot about Chris and Adea's relationship. And she knew them before Adea disappeared. So this invalidates the theory that Chris did something to Adea in order to cover up their affair. It also does seem true from talking to Mary that Chris may have actually been on the run because he was scared of Adea's family. And by the way, if true, it would actually be the Albanian Mafia, not the Macedonian Mafia, since Adea's family is Albanian but living in Macedonia. It's also interesting to see Mary's different picture of Adea, or at least the picture that was painted for her, of Adea outside her and Chris's apartment threatening to kill herself, and also Adea threatening to Gone Girl herself. Gone Girl, of course, is a book and also a David Fincher movie about a woman who fakes her own death in an attempt to get her husband convicted of murder. I can't be sure of anything right now, but it really does seem like Mary is being sincere and truthful, and that a lot of the conjecture about her may be just that, conjecture. I, mean, I probably should have talked to her longer. I probably could have figured out all the, all the movements, but I just felt like I couldn't, I just, I just felt bad keeping her on the phone. Um, well, maybe, maybe, maybe that's good because you had an initial thing and then you could reapproach. While I've been on the phone with Mary, Alex has been searching through social media, looking for more information. And he may have found something. It's already started to get posts on social media. It is? Yep. What's it saying? Um, really hard. Uh, Chris, you were amazing friend. This was two hours ago. But the weird part is this. This guy says, call me bro. You should know his last days was filled with stories of times y'all had. So he must have been with this dude the last couple days? Yep. This chance, do you know who a chance? It's probably worth talking to. Yep, but I'm gonna find out right now. Fort Morgan, Colorado. Sounds right, this is where he's from, right? Yep. Oh, do you have his phone number? I'm trying to find it. I guess we just have to Facebook, if not. Chance just may be the key we've been looking for. If he's friends with Chris and was with him in his last moments, maybe Chris made a last minute confession to him. So I write to him on Facebook. So, so I'm sorry, Chance, sorry to hear about Chris. Can you please call me as soon as possible? Here's my phone number. I'm working on a piece on all this. 
Uh, it would be great to get your memories of him. Thanks so much, Neil. Next time on To Live and Die in L.A. Like, and a guy just found out this morning, I don't know if you knew last night. Yeah, I was with him, bro. I was with him the whole time. Holy shit, dude. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Like, the story needs to be told, dude. This was the point, bro, that we had throwaway pistols. To just go and tie him up and fucking get him to tell the truth. This is To Live and Die in L.A., which has been a production of Tenderfoot TV and myself in conjunction with Cadence 13. The executive producers were myself, Donald Albright, and Payne Lindsay. The producers were Alex Vespasted and Mike Rooney. Our theme song is Love and War by Flurry, and the original music and score are by Makeup and Vanity Set. Before I go on with this, I want to say a couple things, which is if you or someone you know is talking about, toying with, discussing, hinting at suicidal ideation, about ending it all. Call right away the Suicide Prevention Hotline. Don't think you can help them yourself if you're not qualified. It's 1-800-273-8255. If love addiction or sex addiction are issues for you, if toxic relationships are a problem, there are organizations that deal with this and put you into a community and a lot of people start at Codependence Anonymous, which is coda.org, or Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous, which is slaafws.org, slaafws.org, or coda.org. If you have any questions, comments, or tips about this case, you can email us at livedila at tenderfoot.tv or call us at 213-204-2073. Thank you for listening, and thank you for your support. 